Hello, my name is Tim Schmaltz. Welcome to my studio. I have been thinking about St. Peter in the Chains for a while. I've been researching the different ways that St. Uh, Peter has been represented, mostly in paintings with St. Peter in Chains. And I came up with three unique and I think very strong designs that would make for excellent sculptures. I have my favorites and I have the ones that I hate, but I'm not going to tell you that. First of all, let me talk about this one. This one here uh, would have, first of all, let me, get the, let me make a statement that if you're going to have St. Peter in chains, you almost have to include an angel in it somehow. That is the punch of the story. That is the cool aspect. If you eliminate the angel in St. Peter in the chains, you basically eliminated the wow factor. So all of my designs have an angel work within them. Some more prominent than others. So let's get over here where uh, at the top here where you have St. Peter waking up, finding that his chains are broken and an angel is basically uh, the, the, the figure that is waking him up. And you can see the design here, very triangular, very nice. The figure of St. Peter almost in an alcove work within here, which makes for a nice thing. The shock and surprise is not done on his face, hard to do, but sculpture, he'll be like, oh my god, this is bewildered, you know, like he'll be like amazed, shocked, half awake, They're very important with the expressions. The angel will have a confident, loving represent, uh, uh, expression on her face. The, the chains, as you can see, will be snapping as the sculpture basically snaps a photograph of this amazing event here. Relatively traditional, what I can't show you on here is how the patterns of the, of the striations of the draper will add beautiful rhythm and life to the piece. Uh, and you can see the relationship between the two figures is going gonna, is gonna to be telling the story of the bewilderment, uh, the, the, the awe within Peter, and the peace and beauty within the angel. I love the shape of this. It's a very nice uh, piece that... Uh, would work with a large pedestal, so you're looking up at it, or virtually no pedestal at all. But it'd be uh, cast bronze and uh, light figures, ideally would be life size. This they could work smaller too. They could be around three feet with a pedestal on. Very nice sculpture. The second one I have is, I'll tell you, it is my favorite, right down here. You see, what I, I think is amazing about the story is the idea that an angel uh, comes over and uh, puts his hand or her hand on the shoulder of St. Peter. And what I've created here was a dynamic scene where an angel uh, is actually flying down from heaven, waking him up, the one hand on the shoulder, just like it's, uh, basic, the tradition has it. His hands are still in chains. You can see the cracks showing up in there. And it's just like he woke up. He was sleeping on a floor. And this, unlike a lot of the Renaissance paintings, and unlike this piece here, really shows them on the floor. And what I can see here is a cement pad being uh, created. The actual shackles, the chains actually work within the, the, the cement pad just as if it's the bottom floor of, a, of the dungeon where he was staying. Kids could come up and take a look at, at the saint and this sculpture, the, the idea of this sculpture merges with the reality. This would not have a traditional base on. This people would walk by and they would think that the sculpture is just coming out into their everyday life. Uh, as you can see here, the, 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 the rush, the, 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 the angel coming down from heaven, very powerful, very exciting. This basically is emblematic about how our Catholic faith is very exciting and it has to be represented that way within the artwork to capture the imagination of the young kids in the future. This does it. The other uh, design here that I'd like to show you is something that uh, I think is fascinating. What I wanted to do is do something more of a homage to St. Peter himself. So in this one sculpture which kind of takes on the idea of a Celtic cross um, uh, or some of the Northern European Christian artwork, which is very appropriate uh, uh, for uh, this sculpture because like a lot of the Celtic crosses, 
there's a lot of imagery of St. Peter that could be fit within this. So basically, this essentially tells a story. First of all, what you notice is an upside down cross, the symbol of St. Peter, who actually wanted to be crucified upside down uh, so he could show a distinction uh, between his crucifixion and Jesus' crucifixion. But here you have the frame, the upside down cross basically holds the whole story of of uh, St. Peter with the angel with the hand on the shoulder, uh, the chains breaking, the two guards sleeping at the base, and uh, that's something that uh, these two other designs do not have, is the two guards that were asleep when this miracle happened with the angels uh, releasing St. Peter. And also there's, not only do you have the upside down cross, the symbol of St. Peter, but you also have the keys, another very popular symbol of St. St. Peter, the keys of heaven. Also the, the rock at the base of the piece, uh, St. Peter, another symbol, rock of the church. And so there you have it all uh, fused within one sculpture, heavy texture. The relief will be coming out. This is very similar to a sculpture of St. Bridget of Kildare I did for Kildare, Ireland this month. So it's just absolutely charged with all the heritage, all the, sim the rich symbols of, of our Catholic tradition worked within one piece. All these pieces are exciting. This, I, I'd say, for the kids, I think they would love it. This one will be for the kids to tell a story. What are the keys? What are the rocks? Um, uh, and what's the upside down cross all about? It would really be uh, an opportunity to, to tell uh, more than just the one story, but the whole heritage of St. Peter. This one here, probably the most traditional one, and unfortunately it comes off as one of the worst drawings because what this is all about, you can't see on a simple sketch, and that's the detail and the expressions of awe and, and, and the relationship between the two figures there. These sculptures, all of them could work at a, at a smaller size if the budget isn't for the life size. But ideally, I could see, obviously, I could see these figures as being life size. Uh, St. Peter here would be life size, so that would be like six, seven, eight feet would be a nice size for that. And this, you can see life size it would probably be around seven feet or so. So if it's not life size, then it can be a size that's smaller, which also would work well uh, as long as you put a base on it. Even this one, I think, just a long, longer base so the figures line down. Again, like a lot of my uh, popular sculptures, I would love to see a small miniature. This is a miniature of St. Juan Diego, the piece I did in Mexico. But there you can see that uh, a small miniature could be made of the piece that could be used as awards, uh, uh, it could be also used as, as fundraising for future things and whatnot. But the sculpture literally would work life size or even at a smaller size like this. Very happy on any of these drawings to go forward. Very excited about this one and this one. Don't really care very much for this one, it's kind of boring. But anyway, those are my ideas. Thank you.